Okay, being able to look at recursive code and reason about it is hard but really important. Let's look at some strategies. Here's some coded racket for a factorial function. Okay, we have some optional input checks. That can prevent us from getting an infinite loop, like say someone passes a negative number in as input for n. This is probably familiar, but we always want a base case. And I think of the base case as some question someone can ask me that's so simple, I know the answer immediately. It's almost like insulting. So for that function, think about what would be a simplistic question or a simplistic input someone could give you that's almost insulting. I like that this rhymes, the base case and smaller caller. The key thing with our recursive call is that we're calling it on a smaller input. Okay, what does smaller mean? Well, it just means kind of closer to the base case. Okay, combiner might not be vocab that people use very often, but I think it's helpful to think about. Once I make my recursive call, what do I do with that? How do I put these pieces back together? And focusing on the combiner, I think, can be really helpful as you're brainstorming recursive code or trying to understand recursive code. Let's run through three strategies for tracing recursive code forward, backward, and one step. Okay, the forward one I think is gonna be super intuitive to you. This is what most people do. And this is where you're modeling what the computer does to execute the code. So here I'm calculating fact of four, it calls four times fact of three, yada, 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 each of those recursive calls are made. Eventually I get down to fact of one is one, and I return one and I calculate my result by saying one times two times three times four in that order. I wanna encourage you to write more down. So on the left, I have the same idea, but instead of having to trace back along multiple lines in this diagram on the right, on the left, I just have all of the calculations I'm gonna do in order. And since I always work from the inside out, it's really obvious that I multiply two by one before I multiply by three and before I multiply by four. So in general, this is helpful to start with really simple input and try and simulate what the computer would do. Okay, next up is this idea of backwards. Usually, before I've written some code, I can think of what my base case would be. So I can think of some really, really simple input someone could give me where I could give them the answer. So with backward reasoning, what you do is you try and think of that case and just write it down. So I've written the fact of one is one. Okay, once I have that, then I can try and say, what would be something one more complicated than that? Okay, maybe that's fact of two. And how do I go from fact of two, assuming I know the answer for fact of one, because I know the answer for fact of one is one. Okay, so here I'm gonna do two times fact of one. And again, I already know what fact of one is, so I can just plug that in. You may from this point be like, oh, now I can totally write the code. But if not, just go one level further. What's one thing more complicated than fact of two? Okay, that'll be fact of three. What's that gonna be? and so on. So this is a way you can help identify and recognize a pattern so you can turn that into recursive code. Okay, the last one is just thinking about one step. So I take some input, and here I'm taking eight, so fac of eight, and I know from my recursive code that that should be eight times fac of seven. Now if I wanna evaluate if this is gonna give me the correct answer, I can trace through it using the forward path and go through every step of the process. But the thing that's really hard to get Right is the smaller caller, that's the fact of seven. So here I just did x minus one. And the other thing that's really hard to get right is the combiner. And so I think even without digging through and looking at all the forward steps that will happen inside the computer, if I run this, I can just look at this one line and see if I've got the combiner right. Typically when we're writing code, we can predict what the right answer should be. In this case, I could just Google what fact of eight is, and I could use that to check my answer. I find this one step is helpful for checking code if I've gotten something written, and even just brainstorming. I'll take a test case that I've written where I know what the answer is and try and break it up into two pieces. One little piece and then the smaller collar, and how would I combine those? And then testing for one step, would it work? Recursive code can be really hard to think about. So I want you to be able to go back and be like, oh, I could use the forward, backward, or one-step method. Which of these is gonna help me in this case?